Welcome to Link G4X Training Part 56. In this training tutorial, we're going to take a look at setting up an AEM CAN based wideband controller with our Link G4X systems. We're going to have a lot to cover. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at how to set up an AEM X series wideband in our Link G4X on the CAN network. This is a relatively straightforward configuration and setup for the AEM widebands. We're going to go through everything from start to finish here. Now, a couple of details I want to cover before we jump into the training module so that you know where I'm at here in terms of what box I'm working with and how I have everything configured. So I have a Link G4X Extreme box. I have two CAN networks I can work with, CAN Network 1 or CAN Network 2. The CAN Network 2 is found on the ECU header plug and that's where I've wired my AM X series wideband into. Now, I've purposely left out a 120 ohm terminating resistor at the end of my CAN wiring, which would be after the wideband itself. I'm doing this to show you what will happen if you don't have that terminating resistor in the tutorial here. So it's not gonna work when we go configure everything and that's because I'm lacking that 120 ohm terminating resistor. Now with the link CAN wideband controller, it doesn't seem to be affected by not having the terminating resistor, but with the AEM, it does seem to be affected by this. Just something to keep in mind if you're going in and setting everything up, it's always good to put that terminating resistor after the last CAN module in your system. Now, in this case, the Link G4X Extreme Box or any of the Link G4X boxes in the lineup that Link sells, they all have a built-in terminating resistor. We don't have to put a terminating resistor at the beginning of our CAN network, but we do have to place 120 ohm quarter watt or higher terminating resistor at the end of the CAN bus wiring trunk. So we cover where we're at here. Again, this is not going to work out of the box and that's on purpose. I wanna show what this is going to look like if you don't have the terminating, resist the terminating resistor and you run into that fault situation. Now, the other couple things I wanna talk about here is just some basic wiring configuration details for a CAN bus network system. So this is gonna be for any CAN network, making sure that you're adhering to these wiring principles and configuration principles because if you don't, if you have multiple devices on the circuit, it won't work. Let's go and take a look at our schematic real quick here. Now, I did cover this in a previous training module, but I wanna go and bring it into this training module just so we're aware of the basic details here. First thing, looking at our schematic, we have a terminating resistor at either end of our canvas wiring trunk. We have a terminating resistor at the beginning and the end. So in this case, the Link G4X has the terminating resistor built into it. At the end, let's say you're wiring all your CAN devices in, and the last device would be the AIM dash that has a terminating resistor built into it as well. So in this case, we wouldn't need to add a terminating resistor as long as the other CAN modules were placed between our G4X and our dash. That's another important detail to note, which is also very useful. We don't have to have redundant terminating resistors in the, in the system if we have that type of configuration. Now looking at this, a couple other details to mention, our CAN bus trunk wiring, the main trunk of that wiring, shouldn't be any longer than 15 meters. If it is, uh, problems, we always wanna keep it less, which really shouldn't be a problem for most applications we're working in our CAN networking. Second thing that I wanna point out here, or actually a third thing, that's going to be our devices we're gonna find on our CAN network. You wanna make sure that your devices are no longer than 200 millimeters away from that main CAN bus trunk wiring. If you're any longer than that, it's gonna be a problem. Any shorter than that, not a problem. Last little bit of detail here, we have to make sure that our CAN high and CAN low wires are going to be a twisted pair. We wanna make sure the twists are between 20 to 30 millimeter for each twist of the wiring as it's ran in your main CAN bus trunk. If it doesn't adhere to that, you can have problems picking up your devices in your CAN bus network. So just a couple basic details there. Very important because a lot of people overlook those and then you have problems with detecting your device on your CAN network, it doesn't work. So just as long as we're here and do that and taking those basic principles into account, we shouldn't have any problems. So let's jump in here now to our CAN setup and configure our AEM wideband. It's pretty straightforward. We're gonna go in here to our little wrench icon, double click right here, and then we're gonna go into our mode settings. Under the mode CAN configuration, we have to go pick which specific CAN network we wired our device into. In this case, I've wired everything in here to a CAN2. We're gonna select CAN2. Under the mode, we're gonna go here and select our user defined. Now, we do have other OEM options here if we're tying into these OEM CAN networks. In this case, we're not doing that, so we'll just select user defined. Now, the bit rate is the communication speed on our CAN bus network. All the devices on the network have to be communicating at the same bit rate speed. 
In the case of an AEM wideband here, it's not going to be communicating as the default link bit rate, so all the link devices, CAN Lambda modules. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.